I'm doing this from my office. A uh, different video. I haven't used my webcam, but it's too important for me to wait to get in the studio and do this. I want to talk about double standards of justice because it's very important you understand this and digest this. And to do this, I need to review a situation that has developed and one you need to pay attention to. Here in Atlanta, there have been a series of terrorist attacks, and in fact, the terrorists are planning a night of rage tonight where they are encouraging violence, um, retrib ret retribution and violence against police and their allies for the killing of one of the terrorists. You haven't heard about this in the national media, which is so damning. Uh, let me just fill you in if you're unfamiliar with this. Uh, in 2021, at the end of 2021, Atlanta decided to build a police training facility on 89 acres that it owns in the adjacent county to Cab County. Antifa groups started flooding into the area, planting pipe bombs and other things, taking over the land to deny the police their training facility to prevent development of the land. A contractor was uh, named to help build the project. Since then, uh, a youth uh, at-risk youth facility has been firebombed. Uh, the management of the at-risk youth facility had ties to the contractor. The contractor's multiple offices have been firebombed, vandalized, um, looted. Uh, out across state lines, outside of Georgia, this has happened. Uh, people have, Antifa operatives have stormed into churches and disrupted church services where employees of this contractor work and where state troopers work. The state troopers can't be identified um, who are trying to clear the land because of harassment to them and their families. The contractors' churches have had to arm themselves and provide security. The contractors have. Uh, the wives and children of employees of this contractor have come under harassment. It all came to a head on Wednesday of this week when a police officer was shot by one of the Antifa protesters. The police returned fire, killing the protester. Originally, uh, the Antifa activist claimed that this was a peaceful protester and the police shot the police officer. And they questioned the account. And even a Georgia public broadcasting reporter questioned the account, never mind that the police recovered the gun and everything was documented. Even, even some of the media here, they're calling these people activists and protesters. The media has taken a side with these terrorists. If this was white supremacists, if these were white nationalists, if these were Proud Boys, if these were Trump supporters, this would be a major national story. The media, the Democrats, Joe Biden, the FBI, the Justice Department, they've been warning us for several years now that white nationalists, white activists, right-wing militias, they're the biggest domestic terror threat in the country. And yet, the biggest domestic terror threat in the Southeast United States right now are these Antifa activists who have firebombed youth facilities, attacked churches, ransacked buildings. They even firebombed a fire department. Let me explain this one to you. When they first took over this, this park area, they're calling it a park. It's not. It was a prison work farm that had been abandoned and the old land now to be developed. They started setting fires and the fire department showed up and they vandalized the fire trucks. Then they built, they dug pits and they put spikes covered in human feces at the bottom of the pits, hoping the firefighters would fall in when they set fires. So the firefighters decided to stop going to put out the fires. So then they showed up at the fire department and they firebombed the fire department with Molotov cocktails and rocks. They chased off the fire department employees. The leadership of DeKalb County, Georgia, is scared of Antifa and scared of the protesters and sympathetic to their ideals of defunding the police and have told the police and firefighters, you're not allowed to respond. So they were defenseless. They weren't allowed to defend themselves without running afoul of their superiors. And so they had to abandon their facilities. And the police abandoned law enforcement around this facility, which has led the governor of Georgia and the attorney general of Georgia to step in and get the state police involved. And it was state police officers who were shot at on Wednesday. There have been fire bombings disruption of church services, harassment and vandalism of individuals of their homes where they live have been attacked by Antifa and the national media said nothing. And you know and I know damn well if these were white nationalists, proud boys, Trump supporters, right-wing militias, this would be a major national news story. But too much of the media is sympathetic to these causes. The issue here is the standards of justice. There have been over 30 pro-life clinics in this country that have been firebombed. The Justice Department has no open investigations. Only recently, in the last week or two, has the FBI even put out a reward of $25,000 for information. 
The local FBI has been involved on the scene here in Atlanta, but nationally, the Justice Department has had nothing to do with it because it's not right-wingers. It's left-wing defund the police movement people. It's the same thing with the double standard of Trump and Joe Biden and the classified uh, documents. They wanted to prosecute Donald Trump for the classified documents. But if they're going to classify, if they're going to prosecute, they're going to have to prosecute Joe Biden as well. Or Americans will see there's a double standard. And there is a shaped double standard here with this Justice Department and the Biden administration where Antifa activists can attack police, attack citizens, attack churches, firebomb youth, uh, youth facilities and get a pass without consequence, except by the state. You can firebomb a pro-life pregnancy center, and the Biden administration is too busy arresting pro-lifers who have protested at abortion clinics to bother even investigating the pro-life firebombings at the pro-life clinics. Justice is either for everyone or justice is for no one. We're headed towards third world kleptocracy territory where people realize the Justice Department and the political administrations of the day pick the winners and losers based on whether they're friends or foes. Justice must apply for everyone. You can't prosecute Donald Trump for classified documents without prosecuting Joe Biden. You shouldn't be rounding up pro-life protesters without investigating and rounding up the people firebombing the pro-life clinics. But that's what this administration is doing, and the precedents are being set today for the actions tomorrow where justice really is a double standard, where the next Republican presidential administration ignores the people on the right and prosecutes the people on the left, and then the next presidential administration of Democrats ignores the people on the left and prosecutes people on the right. That's the way third world government kleptocracies work. That's not the way the United States is supposed to work. And if you don't get why it's important for the federal government as well to be cracking down on these Antifa terrorists in the Southeast and for justice to be administered to these people, you need to realize now there's a double standard that's going to be shaped. We're either for justice for all or justice for none. And that's on the people of this country to decide.